Hi there, I'm Nicole with so much more and welcome to Churn Challenge. So what we wanna do is get really confident at making the churn dash quilt block. Here's an example of a churn dash quilt block. Now before we press anything, let's talk about our fabric selection. So if you look at the cover churn dash, it has basically two different fabrics, the exterior or the background fabric, and then the print fabric, which is the churn dash. But if you look at this block behind me, there's actually three different fabrics. And so we're gonna spice things up a bit. The directions are for cutting two different types of fabric, but this middle piece right here is the block E. So if you go to page two of your pattern where it talks about cutting, you're gonna be cutting block E if you want to in a separate, and we're gonna fussy cut that in a future video. So let's iron these pieces right now. Now I have used this before. I'm gonna be using this piece to fussy cut. I'm particularly wanting to get at this unicorn head right here. So I'm just going to be concentrating this area right here because I'm gonna be fussy cutting this for the center. So I'm just putting a couple squirts of this little guy and I have a nice hot iron. This is the Oliso TG1600 Pro Plus, really hot. So, and I've got some water in there for steam, nice and hot. So now this piece is ready. I'm not gonna press the whole thing because I really am just going to go for this middle piece right here. Well, we're gonna be doing some fussy cutting in a future video. This is my other piece that I'm gonna be doing some fussy cutting. I hope, I think that this part right here is gonna be my only hope for this piece. So hopefully I'll be able to get what I need. The center square I need to cut is four and a half inches square. So it's gonna be, you know, somewhere around this area. So let me go ahead and put some starch on this last piece to press. This is a much nicer and a stiff, firm hand on this fabric than in compared to this side, which is very pliable and loose. This just has another layer of practically some synthetic starch, which really gives it that structure that's gonna give me a nice, crisp cut. In this video, we're going to be fussy cutting and I've already made my template. My template is the exact size that I'm going to be cutting out of my fabric. And I've just made it out of construction paper. So reference your size on your pattern and then we're going to be lining this up with the fabric to make our markings. Okay, this is our unicorn. And we want it to be something like this. Now remember, even though we're cutting four and a half inches, I don't want to get right next to the horn because we're going to be sewing a quarter inch inside of that, okay? So I want to give myself enough room all the way around. That's plenty on top and on the sides. And then I'm just going to mark that. And I'm, this is going to be my cut line, so I'm not too worried that I'm marking with pencil. You can mark with a friction pen. You know, those can go away when you iron them. And like I said, because this is a cut line, it's not that big of a deal that we mark it. This is any kind of extra stray markings. They're going to be lost inside the seam allowance. So there's my square. And I'm just gonna take my fabric scissors and cut that out. This is this is one of the part, the. <laughs> The unfortunate things about fussy cutting is that sometimes you have to cut through some really amazing fabric to get the bit that you want, and that's the case right here. But this was a fat quarter, and I'm happy to use it. This is going to be super cute. So let's cut this out. There we go. And that is a super cute unicorn ready for sewing. 
Now to make half square triangles, we're going to be following our churn dash block pattern onto page three. And we are marking a diagonal line corner to corner on the wrong side of the fabric with a marking pin. I'm using a friction pin. And this is gonna be a cut line, so we're not gonna worry about what kind of pin we're using. We're just making a line. And then we're going to sew one quarter inch on either side of this marked diagonal line. And so I'm just putting my presser foot right up next to that line. And I know that my presser foot is a patchwork presser foot. And so that is a one quarter inch line from the edge of that. And so I'm doing that to all of these blocks. Now, once I finish uh, sewing, I'm gonna cut along the marked line to make two oversized half square triangle units. And so I'm gonna do that to all of the squares. I'm gonna cut them in half, and now I'm gonna be pressing those seams open. So it's a hot iron. I'm gonna be pressing those seams open. Now, a nifty tool that I have found is called a clapper. And what it is, is it's a piece of wood that you put over a seam that you've just pressed, and it really helps to make those seams nice and flat. I've got this one, it says, so much fabric, so little time. You can get them with all sorts of sayings, different sizes. They're really fun to have, and they're a super useful tool as well. Now, you may be wondering why I have two different types of fabric going here, it's because I'm making two churn dash quilt blocks. And so I'm just batching this up. I'm going to be making two different churn dash quilt blocks. And so all together, I've made four half square triangle units on each churn dash quilt block. So a total of eight. So I'm just about done pressing. And then once I get done pressing, I'm going to be trimming this. Now we're on page three. We're still on page three of the pattern. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to trim our quilt blocks. Now what I have here is a ruler that has a 45 degree mark. This ruler is exactly the same size as I want the block to be. So it's really simple to match up. It's a four and a half inch ruler, which is the, the size that we're trimming down to. And I realize not everybody has that size of ruler, although they are available and I use them quite often. But you just need a ruler that has a 45 degree mark. You're going to line it up and then use the markings on your ruler to get yourself that finished size. So I've just slowed down to show you that um, you need to trim everything down. We're taking those little corners that are called dog ears off of the quilt block. So we're gonna go ahead and just trim all of these up we're doing it really quickly. It's all the same motion over and over. And remember, I'm doing uh, two different churn dash quilt blocks. And so that's why you're seeing the two different colors being trimmed here. And now we're all finished. And I can't wait to share with you the next step of making your churn dash quilt block. We're going to be making our rectangle units. And this is on page four of your churn dash block pattern. And so right now we've, um, take, we're taking our feature fabric and our D rectangle of background fabric and we're putting them right sides together and we're sewing a quarter inch seam down one long edge of the matched pair. And so um, again, I'm making two different churn dash quilt blocks. So I'm showing you, this is my regular patchwork, patchwork foot that I'm using. And um, just let's take a look at how I achieved my seam allowance. So we're just do doing a close up look with my ruler. And that's, that's good, one quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now I'm gonna switch my foot and I'm gonna put on my quarter inch presser foot. And you can see that it's a quarter inch from the middle, a little bit less than that because I love a scant quarter inch. I also have the grid glider mat down that has a quarter inch marking. So that also helps. So again, right sides together. We'll be taking our uh, B as in Bravo rectangle of feature fabric and D as in David rectangle of background fabric and just using the, um, I'm using the edge. See, there's a hinge 
on that presser foot. So I'm not sure if your machine comes with that. Mine does, but you can also get them aftermarket. And to show you that that turned out really good. So we've got our quarter inch and now we did press those seams open. I didn't show that, but we're pressing them open. And then I'm using a regular straight edge ruler and I'm lining up the center with the middle line there and I'm making my cuts. Again, your cut measurement is four and a half inches. We're on page four and I had to, I had to kind of make do with what I had on scraps. So um, I just had a little bit of these uh, fabrics left over. It's a discontinued line. So I had to make a, a couple different pieces in order to make this churn dash quilt block happen. So I'm just, um, that's why I have two different pieces that I'm cutting. You probably, when you make yours, will have one long strip. Now for my other rectangle units, I'm going to use what's called a stripology ruler. Now this is not required. It's actually kind of an expensive ruler, but man, do I love it. It has these slots that are put inside of the ruler to help you accurately cut, make really quick, accurate cuts of strip sets and all sorts of other types of uh, cutting as well. So the first thing you do is you align it with your strip unit and let me let me give you a close-up look so I, there's a line on the bottom of the stripology ruler and i am just lining up my the bottom of my fabric with that bottom line and see there are little gaps right there where you can put your rotary cutter and there's measurements and markings it's a pretty fantastic ruler and what's special about this ruler is that you don't have to adjust your fabric when you're making cuts. Sometimes, you know, when you're making cuts and you move your ruler, sometimes the fabric moves and um, maybe the, the rotary blade moves the fabric a little bit as you progress along your strip set. But with the stripology ruler, you don't have any of that happening. You're just making your cuts, your blade fits right into the groove, and you can cut really accurate, accurately, really quickly, and you can stack several fabrics. So this is just an example of what you can do with that. It's the same thing as your other ruler, just a lot quicker. I'm gonna use the hinge foot or the quarter inch foot. It has this little hinge on it. It helps keep the fabric up against the flange, if you will, and helps me maintain a quarter inch seam allowance. That's gonna be key when piecing these basically a nine patch that we're now putting together. So I'm gonna change out my patchwork foot for this quarter inch foot. It's just a matter of preference. And then I'm going to start piecing each row. I'll press those seams according to the diagram in our pattern. And then we'll sew these blocks together. attaching these pieces to the rows I've already started and then we'll press those seams in the direction the patterns indicate.
All right, so we're gonna be on page five of our pattern here at the very end, and we're gonna be pressing our seams. And on these bottom and top, we're gonna to be pressing the seams out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that first seam pressed. I'm gonna use my little clapper here to help set that seam. Make it nice and flat. Now we're gonna do the middle block. The middle block is gonna, the seams are gonna go inside. They're gonna go in the opposite direction. So let's do that. And when we press our seams in the opposite direction, this helps them to nest together and kind of sit together where they meet at these junctions right here. This is kind of where we're going to be matching them up to sew. Okay, and then one more. And these are going to be out, pressed out. I'm going to do in order to get these seams to match up is I'm going to use pins and you can see where those two seams are and I'm getting them to match up right there where they're nesting right next to each other and then I'm going to place a pin right there on one side and I'll place a pin on the other side because this is the place that I care about the most is where that seam matches and then I'll also place a pin there towards the end. And then I'll do the same thing on this side where the seam matches. I'm gonna nest those seams and place a pin. And on the other side as well. go so now we're going to sew a quarter inch seam all the way down now I'll be taking these pins out as I get to them because I don't like to sew over pins I'm coming up on that join and I'm I'm gonna press this part down right here I don't want to feel really any kind of bump so I'm gonna hold it down until I get up into that there we go. let's see how it turned out when we're done again with where the seams come together I want to make sure that it's nice and flat That's flat. All right, let's take a look and see how that seam matched up. So I'm looking right here 
to see if everything matched up. This line matches up with this line. Everything matches up right there. All right, so we're gonna take this that is already together and add that last piece to that. We're gonna pin it. And then when we're done sewing, then we'll press all of the seams. Again, we're gonna be aligning our seams right here and we're gonna nest them. So I'm gonna bring that right up where I can feel them kind of nested or kind of budding right up next to each other. Put a pin there. And on the other side, come over here and do the same thing. I've got all this extra thread right here. It's in my way. All right, and then again, we're gonna be pinning towards the end of this, just to give us a nice straight line to sew. All right, now, now that we've got everything pinned, we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and sew that last seam together. All right, last seam. Just making sure that it's nice and flat right there where this these seams are coming together. out a little bit. There we go. Now it's laying flat. Mm, I've got kind of a fold on my uh, on my fabric there. I'm going to make that lay down. All right, let's take a look at these seams. See how we did. That looks like a really nice section right there. Got some thread coming through there, but that one looks really good also. And you'll notice here at the edges that our points don't go all the way to the end. And that's because we need that area right there because that's the quarter inch that we're going to be like, if we were to sew these together to another block, you still wanna keep these points. And so you'll have a quarter inch left over on each end. Now here we are on the home stretch of the churn dash quilt block and we're going to press our seams open. If I can just get it open, there we go. Now the trick on pressing the seams open is not to have your iron press the rest of the seams in a different way than what's already been pressed. That looks good. Should be our last seam to press. Very exciting. Let 
I'm just gonna use my clapper to get these seams nice and flat. I do it down here again. Whoops. See that seam got flipped over. I just love this quilt block. It's so versatile. You can, you know, this is three different colors. You can actually, you know, do different colors for your half square triangles than you do for your rectangle bars. So there's all sorts of options that you can use for this quilt block. But I really like how this came together and I'm really glad that I used my precious fabric. So there is our churn dash quilt block. Yay, good job everyone. Now that you've mastered how to make the churn dash quilt block, let's put your new skills to test with a churn chain quilt pattern. The churn chain quilt pattern has a video course option to help you finish your churn chain quilt pattern faster. Be sure to head over to my online shop to learn more about this pattern and the video course as well.